Hello Libra. Welcome to the Plaid Sheep Oracle. So your reading uh, definitely is a, an esoteric reading, a, um, a metaphysical reading, but it may have also direct application in your life. Possibly, I don't know. So we start here with the Star Brothers and the Well Means. And what, what's striking about both of these cards is this imagery of three. Right? And that there's a sense of also of oneness, though. Right? A sense that these things are both three and one. And this idea of three and one shows up again, and also three, just threes in general, three possibilities. Three routes. So the number three, it may mean something to you. That the threes uh, have significance for you. I was listening earlier to a video about harm, the, the idea of um, harmonics in astrology, that that aspects are um, harmonics. So a, a trine is the third harmonic, because there are three trines in that 360 degree circle. So there may be something for you personally about trines in your chart. There may be a trine transit that's occurring that is significant. I don't know. Or it may just be threes in some other way. But there is something about three because we start here with the Empress, who is number three, the Major Arcana three. And yesterday, Venus re-entered Libra. I'm not sure why I wanted to use the word re-entered. I mean, kind of every sign is sort of a re-entry because planets go around and around, but there's something about that too. I don't know, maybe there was something the last that happened the last time Venus was in Libra. I'll try to remember to put those dates. in the description the last time Venus was in Libra. But there's something, something about re-entry, having been gone somewhere, perhaps. Maybe it's re-entry into life in a bigger way. If you've been uh, hermiting, uh, this Empress is in particular, a very still sort of energy. So maybe you have been quiet, perhaps really internally focused, or maybe focused on just your family. So there is, there is a sense that this Empress is about to move. That she's been here still for a long time. But right below her is this page of fire. And I kind of imagine uh, the hermit card in this deck is a door with a bunch of keys over it. And I kind of imagine the Empress standing in front of that hermit door that leads 
to the outside world. And that this page of fire is knocking. It's time to go. It's time to come out. Can the Empress come out and play? And then three again with the three of air. And here too, I have this sense that that we're just like right before this figure lifts her chin up. She's been in this internal world, this internal focus. Um, and because it is the three of air, the three of swords, and there is a, a feeling of melancholy. Um, of maybe getting a little spun out, of spending too much time in the head. And it's like she's about to lift her chin and make a move. These birds, all right, these birds have been back here. Um, encouraging her. Right, encouraging her A to do what she needs to do, but now to to come out of it. And the same for this nine of earth. Also a very still card. Um, focused perhaps on some physical, material, or uh, resource aspects of life, but in, in a very singular way. Maybe you've been very concerned about some resource aspect of your life. And it's been taking up a lot of your focus of your attention. But now we have the one, the three to the one, the unified will, the plans coming together, the internal family coming into a unified space. With this, right, this whole new emotional paradigm. Like everything changes somehow. Just, just because the three, the three become one. Um, possibly mind, heart, spirit. And that shows up again here in the Three of Water, which is often for me my unified will card. This confirmation of three and one. And that these exist simultaneously. That they can be both separate and together. And we have this same idea here in this 10 of discs establishment card. That there is this, you know, both this unity, but then also all of these outside rings. So this may be something about you and the outside world. Um, Maybe, maybe you've been working on something. 
Maybe you've been building something that now is ready to be shared with everybody else. And that it's going to ripple out once you share it. And this can be true both for a project, an idea, a business, as well as for who you are and how you engage with the world. Because we come here to the perspective card. Uh, this is the hanged man in this deck. And here are the yes and, right? Sun and moon, black and white, dark and light. Being able to accommodate the yes and, and then taking that perspective out into the world and sharing it with others. There is definitely a sense here of, of this movement from internal to external. And from a more uh, intellectual perspective into a more emotional one. And, right, Ace of Wands. The second Ace, the second One. Coming together in such a way that is dynamic and expressive, and that is a beacon that calls to others. Right, like carrying the torch or you even turning on your porch light to show that you're home and uh, ready for visitors. Because that's the other possibility, right? Not that you are going out, but that you are inviting other people in. And so we have the Queen of Cups. And she here is also this sort of Venus Empress figure, but she's gone from this very still, uh, almost frozen aspect, you know, here behind the door, alone, to this open, engaged, engaging figure, right, who's now outside, right? She's got her, her cup out there. She's drunk from it. She's ready to share it with others. I sort of see that there are, right, there are others here gathered around her. And we get that here now with this gathering energy. Now it says resilience, but today it is really, right? We go from this lone wand to one that has others. So there is something here about attracting other people um, other people with ideas, right? These are collaborators. They all have their own wand that they're bringing to this party. And then this seven of discs, it's my favorite seven of discs, even though it says perseverance, which is not a word I actually like very much. Right? Thriving is so much better than persevering. But 
there, right, there is this rising energy, this uh, energy of being in alignment, right, all of the chakras humming and communicating well with one another. And also maybe a bunch of people, you know, seven people, a group. Coming together as a result of whatever it is that you have brought out. So now we have another sort of grouping of perhaps different ways of doing things, but also maybe a sequence or a variety. So we start here with touch the sky. And this is kind of a, right, it's a, I don't want to call it lazy, but it's, you know, being out on a summer afternoon and, you know, there's nothing particular that this person is fishing for with her hair. She's just, right, she's put it out there. She's put out her antenna in kind of a gentle way. Whatever comes in, comes in. All right, there's birds kind of flying around. One is landed here, may have a message just gently. And then the next card underneath, I mean, actually all of these <laughs> are, it's now that I picked that one up, right? This moon dance, you know, here she's, she's got that moon out there, that moon antenna, but she's really sort of focused on on staying on this, this line. So this is kind of the listening is in the background to the main thing. And then actually below that is this home in the sky. So here there's all kinds of people. It's a whole group of people putting their antennas out. And these antennas actually, just like the moon, are kind of an intermediary as opposed to this direct connection, right? To this hair on her head. And that then is increased here, right? This is very deliberate. I'm going to stretch out every sense I have. This is very focused. I am reaching out for information. I've asked a question. There's something I want to know. I need to know. And I am reaching for it with every, every available sense. And then we have this oh sunny day. And here too, there's this umbrella antenna. But here, I want to say that this is a transmutation of energy that's going on here. Right, she's sitting on this mushroom, which, so there's this antenna that reaches up to the sky, and then there's this mushroom stem that reaches down into the earth. So here she is kind of a conduit. She is a transformer of energy. So maybe not so much information, although it could be downloads that are converted in such a way that they can be shared with others. Um, this could be a manifestation technique of bringing something into physical reality. Uh, 
Um, this could be with this sunny day thing. It could be being someone who is grounded for others, helping others to, um, to ground themselves, to regulate themselves, to convert their own difficult energies into something useful. And then there's this treasured memories. And this, this feels like the creation of dreams. And that she's actually, she's created this dream up here and she's gonna let go. She's holding on to this balloon, but it's not very tightly. And she's going to unwind it from her hand and let it go when that cloud is complete. And this could also be sort of a manifestational technique, but I almost want to say that it's like, or maybe not, I almost want to say, I want to say that it is about the creation of a beautiful vision that is going to be shared with others and shared in this very cosmic metaphysical way. There may of course be, you know, a more um, practical sharing. Maybe you're, you're writing something or you're, um, you're a teacher or, uh, you know, you write songs or poetry or you're an artist in some way or, right? There's so many ways that one could share an idea, but this feels very much like sharing the idea to the group unconscious, right? Sending this energetic creation out into the world and doing it kind of on a regular basis. So here we have this maze card. And I think that in the past, this is kind of what it's looked like, right? You were this empress behind the door and every time you kind of open the door to peek outside, it looked like this. So it's no wonder really that you were like sticking indoors and keeping the door closed, not such an attractive landscape to have to navigate this maze and there's this lightning coming down and it's just not. But now when you open the door, you find this instead. This four of earth. Right, it's gone from being this impenetrable maze with storm clouds to the stone circle in the sunlight with bees buzzing and the smells of flowers and earth. Right, especially after right, there was this giant rainstorm and now everything is clear and clean and smells fresh. Plus, previously, you felt really alone. Right, there was this singular nine of earth, I must, right, I have to cope with everything, energy. Right, or I am, I am alone, maybe, you know, maybe you felt like I'm the only one who's aware in my friend group. I'm the only one who is going on this spiritual journey. Everybody else, you know, seems really caught up in other things. But now, below that, we have this strength card. And there you are with the posse. 
a whole group, all kinds of people, right? Everybody who's brought their wand to the party is there with you. And so we have this two of air and with this tree that is right arranged like lungs, there's a sense of taking a deep breath. Maybe for the first time in a long time, of really being able to breathe. Because of course, if you keep yourself locked up, I mean, if you, if you literally locked yourself up in a room, you would run out of oxygen. It would become more and more difficult to breathe. You would need to open the door and step outside. And then you can breathe. And so we have the world setting out. Now, in this place, the old world is burning. But maybe, you know, that doesn't necessarily have to be. Right? It could just be that it's not actually burning, that it's just storm clouds that are kind of hanging out over the old world. And you're leaving that and going into this sunny space. And then we have the final three here with this gentle, kind, friendly, collaborative energy of the three of Earth. I mean, interestingly, the only three that's missing, we have the three of air, the three of water, and the three of earth. The only three we're missing is the three of fire. And it may be that that is your, right, that what is, what is happening, right, is this three of fire energy is building up within you. And then what you, right, what you really bring is this uh, creative three of fire energy. So advice for Libra. Eight of Pentacles. And this Eight of Pentacles all right, this doesn't, this card never seems like the traditional Eight of Pentacles to me of, of, you know, kind of doing the work. This seems like meeting up with the trickster, meeting up with the magician, actually, in the wood. And he gives you this magic bag. And the thing about the magic bag and, you know, the magic bag appears in stories, right? The, the magic bag that's always filled with food. But Libra, what is, right, what the magic of the bag is that it works when you share it. So if you're the only one taking stuff out of the bag, if you, right, if you stay behind the door, if you don't engage with others collaboratively, because you could be, right, you could be totally engaging with others, but not in a collaborative way. It may be that you're doing it in a controlling way or a people-pleasing way where you're not really sharing. But when you do that, when you do really share, that's when the bag works. That's when the bag 
refills over and over when the bag is endless and infinite. So we have the Two of Swords, and in this deck very much, right, the, the cutting away what is not necessary. And there are several things to cut here. Um, below this Eight of Pentacles is the Four of Cups, kind of ennui, um, apathy. Um, kind of an emptiness, right? It, it, you know, feeling like you don't maybe have any more to give or that you've run out of ideas. Um, and then on the bottom of the deck is the Five of Cups. Disappointment, sorrow, the maze. This time in your own mind. And that is, of course, where the maze begins, is in your own mind. And then the Eight of Cups. And what's interesting about this Eight of Cups is that he's carrying them around on his head. Right? These are cups you've decided you don't want, but maybe you've been still carrying them around with you. Right? Just in case, I might need this cup later. Or I can't really put this cup down. You know, I have a sentimental attachment to this cup. Taking the cups off of your head and leaving them. And then cutting out the hermit. Right? Because this hermit always feels... Um, you know, sort of extra hermity lying here in his coffin. There are, from my perspective, sort of two broad ways to be the hermit. One, you can really be the hermit where you're isolating yourself, where you don't share things with other people, where you keep yourself emotionally isolated, even if you're wandering around in a crowd where you keep all your ideas to yourself, where you don't trust, um, where you're blocked off. Or there is the, what, what one might call the evolved hermit, I guess, the, the expansive hermit, who Keeps himself to himself when that's appropriate. Who spends a lot of time in communion with Source and his soul and the all it is. Who keeps his own counsel. But who is always open to visitors. Who might show up. who is open to collaboration when that is appropriate. So the, the ending, ending the isolation, however it works for you, whether it's emotional and intellectual or actually also physical. So Libra. The three into one, and then the one into many. Um, unified will, the collaboration with others, and the re-entry <laughs> into the world. I wish you all the very, very best, Libra. And I will see you next time. So long.